Hello, how are you? I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. And this will only happen once to Bitcoin. You know, there's lots of things that happen throughout history and they only happen once. You know, Gerald, the, the Ford company, rolled out their first Model T off of the factory floor once. And there was only one first automobile to be made. The next one that came out was the second one. And so that happened only once that this was the first automobile out of our factory. Since then, they've produced billions of automobiles. There was only once when the Declaration of Independence was signed. It only happened once. It's never happened again. Well, there's something that's about, and, and, and you know, somebody's only born once. You're only born one time. You can't go back and try it again. You can't redo it. You can't do it over. There's something about to happen with Bitcoin. In fact, it may already have happened. The writing is on the wall. It's only going to happen once. Now, you may feel like I'm stressing this too much. I'm, I'm overdoing it. Well, you're right. I am. I'm overdoing it because I really want you to pay attention. I really want you to take action. I really want you to do something. So hang on. This entire video is going to give you lots of pieces to the puzzle. And when you see all the pieces, it'll kind of open a door and you'll go, oh my gosh, it is happening. At least that's my hope. So watch the video all the way to the end. I hope I get this message across to you in a way that you take action. So let's dig into it. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? That's the question that our channel, this YouTube channel, attempts to answer. We're trying to help you make good decisions. We want to give you ideas that'll help you take profits and avoid losses. So tell me, can we get this video to 99 likes? I need your help. Smash the like button. It really does help us a lot. Now, this is my disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. My background is in computers. This is not financial advice. I'm not the person to go to for financial advice. If you need financial advice, please seek out a professional that can give you financial advice. What you're about to get out of this video is my opinion. And like anybody's, I mean, I'm just another guy on a YouTube channel on the internet. There's over, you know, there's billions of us out there making videos for YouTube, videos for the internet. And so take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm gonna give you links to all of the articles that I discussed today. We're not gonna cover the articles in depth and so, my recommendation is if I've sparked any kind of curiosity in you, go look up those articles. Read them in their entirety. Go to Google and, and do searches to find out other articles and more information about the topics that we cover. Start getting more information so that you can make a good decision for yourself and for your family. As any investment, cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss but cryptocurrency is more risky than a lot of other investments. And here's the biggest reason why. The price can drop a lot. I've had times where my portfolio, my cryptocurrency portfolio had lost more than 70% of its value. In fact, if I really looked back at the numbers, it was probably more like 82, 85, 87%. I just don't want to look at that. And so, while I know I lost more than 80% of its value, here's the thing about cryptocurrency in particular. If you don't sell, you won't lose. Well, I can't promise you that you won't lose money in the future, but I can tell you this. Over the last decade for Bitcoin, if you bought Bitcoin, held it for three years, and did not sell it, you would have made anywhere from seven times your money to several million dollars for three years for just a thousand dollar investment. Now, um, and there was one year where that's not the case. One three, I say one year, it wasn't one year, it was a three year period. During that three year period, instead of you making seven times your money, you made 18%. You still came out ahead. You made 
a little bit more than you would have if you stuck it in a bank account at 2%. Um, in fact, you probably did very closely to what you would have made if you'd invested in the S&P 500, the regular stock market, um, but you didn't do spectacularly. Outside of that one three-year period, all the others, you're looking at a 6x return, 6 times your money return, 7 times your money return, 40 times your money return. If you want to see a chart, go back into my videos on YouTube, look at some of my older videos, the ones that I did say about uh, June, uh, March, April, June, somewhere in that time frame. A lot of those videos contains the chart where I show you here's the most recent three years from 2017 to 2019 and then 2016 to 2018 and I show I break it down so you can see exactly how much money you would have made in Bitcoin every three years. I didn't know I was going to bring that up otherwise I would have thrown the chart into this into this video. Never even occurred to me that I was going to go there so I don't have the chart handy or ready. Now this will only happen once to Bitcoin. If you miss the birth of your child, you've missed it. Now, a woman can't miss it because she's intimately involved with that birth, but the husband, the father, certainly can miss it. Maybe he's out of town, maybe he's at work or something else and he wasn't there for the birth. But that birth happens only once and if you miss it, it's over with. It's done. You can't redo it. It's, there's no takeovers. There's no redos. What I'm about to talk to you about Bitcoin is the same thing. Don't miss it. I'm talking to you about adoption. When telephones came out, there were only a few people that had a phone. And then suddenly, nearly 100% of the people in the world, especially in the United States, but in also most of their countries, now have phones. You can't take that back. There's no way to go back to the day when there are only a handful, a few hundred, a few thousand, or even just a million people have a phone. You, you can't undo that. You can't reset the clock. Unless you have some way to time travel into the past, it's been done and you can't go back there. The same thing with all of this other lists of different technologies, televisions, video games, electricity, travel, Personal, personal computers, cars, color TVs, etc. You can see that a long time ago, it took a long time for some things to become mass adopted. But in today's world, 2000, 2010, it, instead of it taking decades for something to go reach mass adoption, it's taking years for things to reach mass adoption. And I know some of you are saying, well, Bitcoin's been out there for a decade. It hasn't reached mass adoption. But you got to understand where Bitcoin started. It started with just a handful of guys and girls that decided to create the program. There were so few people involved that it's taken a decade before it's gotten global attention. But today, Bitcoin has global attention. And we're about to enter this type of a curve. And so if you're down here, you're going to do really well. But if you wait until it's up here, or maybe up here, or maybe up here, while you can still benefit from it, you miss the boat of whatever happened prior to the point at which you jump in. And there's no way doing it. There's no going back. Once, once Bitcoin has 40% of the market, once Bitcoin has 60% of the market, once Bitcoin has 80%, and I say Bitcoin... Just, just throw in there your favorite cryptocurrency. Maybe you love XRP or Litecoin or one of the others. There's 2,000 cryptocurrencies out there. I'm saying Bitcoin only because 70%, 80% of the market cap is in Bitcoin. And um, while, there's, while there's many, many other cryptocurrencies out there and, and many of them are very relevant, they have fantastic projects, None of them have the market cap that Bitcoin and some of them, um, well, when you look at what the institutions are doing, they always do it with Bitcoin. Some of them do it with Bitcoin only and some of them do it with Bitcoin and a handful of other cryptos. But overall, Bitcoin is the leader, the market. The, anyway, it's the big boy in town. So enough of that. Let's move on. 
adoption, in terms of adoption of Bitcoin, we're somewhere in this ballpark. We may have reached the 2.5% mark. I don't know, and I don't know of a really good way to try and judge that because we really don't know how high this is going to go. Are we going to stop adoption at 60% or 80% or will it actually reach a point where everybody in the world has some cryptocurrency? Now, if the things that China is doing with their central bank adopting digital currencies and you want to include central bank digital currencies into the cryptocurrency fold, if you're thinking in that terms, then yeah, governments, as they start adopting some form of digital currency, eventually it will get to 100%. Um, if you decide that you are only going to consider those that are decentralized and do not have any kind of governmental control, then I don't know what the max percentage of adoption will be. Maybe it'll be 60%. Maybe it'll be 100%. At this time, I don't know that we could really predict that well. I think we'll know a few years down the road, maybe a decade or two. Time will only tell. So anyway, here's the important part. If you get in here, you're going to see the bulk of this growth. If you get in here, you'll have missed out and there's just no way to go back. So where are we at today? I, a week ago, and today is July 27th, 2020. So a week ago was July 20th, 2020. I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone and he was telling me about how TradeStation had just started doing cryptocurrency. And I said, really, I hadn't heard that. I have a, uh, I, I'm interested in TradeStation. I'm interested, I have a stock brokerage account. And if TradeStation is doing it, maybe I need a TradeStation account. And, and I would like to be able to trade cryptocurrency through my stock brokerage account. Well, I went to the website and it just simply had an email box on it saying, hey, if you're interested in crypto, give us your email. We'll let you know when we release it. And then on Saturday, I was talking to a different friend of mine, and he said, had you heard TradeStation has released it? And I was like, you're the second person that told me that. The first one, it wasn't yet. Let me go look again. And when I got there on Saturday, which, let me look at my calendar. I, I think Saturday was the 25th. So today's the 27th. Saturday was the 25th. And so I looked on Saturday, I saw this. And it tells us that TradeStation is now trading in Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and XRP. One of the first things I wanted to know is, can I transfer my cryptocurrency directly into TradeStation? I found that, yes, I can. I can deposit my crypto into a TradeStation account, and I can withdraw it from a TradeStation account. That was important because I like to self-custody. Um, I recommend that you self-custody using a hardware wallet such as a Trezor or a Ledger hardware wallet or one of the others. There's now a whole bunch of different hardware wallets out there. Trezor and Ledger were the first two I heard about and I've used them both. Anyway, this is huge. Do you have any idea how much money is managed by the stock markets? In fact, is TradeStation the only one that's going to do this? No. Fidelity is getting involved. TD Ameritrade is getting involved. Charles Schwab is likely to get involved. We're going to see these stock market, uh, these multi-billion dollar stock market companies getting involved with cryptocurrency. And they have advertising budgets that would, would blow your mind. And when they start putting their advertising dollars into cryptocurrency and saying, look, you need to come here because we can get you cryptocurrency. We're going to keep your crypto safe. We're going to protect it. We're going to make sure that you're okay and your family's okay. You're going to love it, blah, 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 whatever their marketing team comes up with because their marketing team is going to come up with some brilliant ideas and ads and you know, just on and on it goes as it always does when any marketing team gets out there and they start pounding the pavement to try and influence people to invest. Well, they're going to start trying to influence people to invest in cryptocurrency. In fact, when you look at the various stock markets all over the world, they have over $69 trillion that's invested into different stock markets around the world. 
and with $69 trillion of assets that can easily, I mean, once you open that stock market account, if you already had a whole bunch of Microsoft stock and you say, you know what? I want to buy some Bitcoin or I want to buy one of the other cryptocurrencies. It's really easy to just press a couple of buttons and boom, you got Bitcoin. And if you really wanted to, you could transfer it into your own hardware wallet. Oh my gosh. That is huge, huge, ginormous. I, 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 I don't know what words to use to express how big of a deal that is um, because there's hundreds of millions of people that will suddenly have very easy access to cryptocurrency. Well, you might say in rebuttal, well, it's slow. Bitcoin is really slow. Not when you're using a centralized service such as TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab. Look, I just, a few hours ago, I decided I wanted to trade some cryptocurrency. And so I transferred it onto an exchange. Once it was on that exchange, I clicked a couple of buttons and transferred it from cryptocurrency A into Bitcoin. It took it seconds to handle it because it didn't actually run the transaction on the, on the blockchain. It ran the transaction in the databases on that exchange. And that's what's exactly happening, say, with the New York Stock Exchange. They opened up a cryptocurrency. New York Stock Exchange opened up a cryptocurrency exchange called BACT, B-A-K-K-T. And the BACT exchange you'll be able to instantly move Bitcoin around because it happens on their back end and never hits the blockchain. Doesn't hit the blockchain until you do something like withdraw your funds. And when you withdraw your funds, that's when it'll actually hit the blockchain and actually, you know, you move it into your own hardware wallet or software wallet or whatever device you're using, or you'll be able to leave it right on the New York Stock Exchange's website. In fact, if you've been following the BACT organization, B-A-K-K-T, they are coming out with their own app. And this is, the BACT exchange is a joint venture between the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange, Starbucks, and Microsoft. Now, do you think those three companies are going to let that thing fail? Heck no. In fact, the app that they're coming out with, you're going to be able to run it down to a Starbucks buy your coffee with Bitcoin. The app is actually really, really powerful because not only are you going to be able to use Bitcoin on it, but if you have airline miles, you could buy your coffee with airline miles. If you have a favorite game and you're getting uh, points within that game, some, of, some games will be able to transfer those points from the game into the Microsoft Starbucks Bitcoin app and actually buy coffee with it. Or maybe you want to use those gain points to buy Bitcoin. Maybe you want to use the airline miles to buy Bitcoin. The app will do quite a few things. If you go to the BACT website, B-A-K-K-T, look them up and go to their website, you can learn more about the app that's going to be released very, very soon. What? Banks? Banks are getting involved in cryptocurrency. Where do you keep your money? Um, what's in your wallet? Well, whatever company that is, whether it's Capital One, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, or one of the many, many others, you're going to be able to use and store cryptocurrency at your bank. Banks in the U.S. can now offer crypto custody services, say the regulators. Now, this happened to Germany this fall. I think it was, I don't remember the time frame. I don't remember if it was December, January, February. It was sometime, maybe not the fall, but maybe the winter um, and, and now it's flooding the world. Banks are getting to a place where they're going to be custodying cryptocurrency. And as banks get the ability to handle cryptocurrency, then anybody with a bank account will be able to do it. Well, what about people who don't have bank accounts? Look what's happening in India with cryptocurrency. There are a number of exchanges that are doubling the number of users they have in weeks or months. And when they're seeing that kind of steady growth, you know that they're getting more and more market share in their country. And these are Indian exchanges. Ever since the India Supreme Court came out and ruled 
in the favor of cryptocurrency exchanges. India has been exploding with cryptocurrency. And so that's why I say, are you waiting until you see evidence? Because you may not see it because it's happening all around the world in countries that if you're not reading the cryptocurrency news, you wouldn't know what's going on. I mean, China is one of the biggest miners of Bitcoin in the entire world. They have more hash rate, hash power, which is a measure of the computing power devoted to Bitcoin mining. The, the largest share of that is actually happening in China. Doesn't that tell you something? Aren't the Chinese getting involved with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so because this is a global phenomenon and most of us only know what's happening in our own backyard, this could happen silently and happen without our recognizing it. So don't be asleep at the wheel. Get the news you need. Get the information you need. Anyway, I've been a little bit more passionate than I normally am. I'm, as you can see, I'm kind of fired up. I thought the information that I just shared you with you about banks and about trade station and about the stock market, all of that has happened in the last week. In fact, there was actually a really interesting uh, case with the federal government. Federal government, uh, uh, there was an exchange that was created in the United States and uh, supposedly the federal government thought that they were doing money laundering and so they shut down the, the exchange, they, they arrested the guy that built it and, and ran it, um, and they were prosecuting him. And his attorneys said, hey, you can't prosecute this man for money laundering because Bitcoin cryptocurrency, it's not money. You said, in the, according to the IRS and other federal agencies, it's property, not money. And uh, the government in that court case decided that Bitcoin cryptocurrency is money. Now, I'm curious if that's going to have some tax implications. If it's money, then well, how come you're taxing us like it's property? Anyway, that's for a future thing, um, especially when it starts getting hashed out in the courts, because I'm sure that there's some very, very wealthy people in the United States who are trading Bitcoin that when they learn of that court case, they may decide to go ahead and sue the IRS because they've already paid millions of dollars in capital gains tax. And by suing the IRS, hey, maybe they can get some of those millions back because they were unfairly taxed when this was uh, not property, but really it was actually money. So how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions, thoughts? I'm sure I said something today you probably disagree with. I would love to hear your polite disagreements in the comments section below. I'd also love to hear from you regardless. I mean, tell me if you love the video. Tell me if you hate the video. I'm interested in hearing from you. So how can I be of service to you? How can I do a better job? What would you like me to do? What would be of interest? What are you curious about? What, what is it that you've always wanted to ask somebody about cryptocurrency? Please ask it. I may not have the answer, but I'll do my best to give you useful information. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like subscribe and hodl, and do me a big favor. Have a fantastic day.